Hello everyone. Today we'll talk about another boost class, variant. As we know, in C as well as C++, we have union. So if I create a union int i float f u, then the same storage space of u can be used to either store an integer or a float, but not both at the same time. So if I do u dot i equal to 34, and then u dot f equal to 2.3, then u dot i at this point is overwritten. So this is how union works. But the problem with union is it has to work with plain old data. If I create a union of integer and a string, then this will not compile. This makes union almost useless once we enter C++, because in C++ we almost always deal with classes. This is why boost library provide variant library. A variant is like a union for C++. After I included the variant header, I can start using a variant boost variant int string u1 and u2. So u1 and u2 can be used to store either an integer or a string, but not both at the same time. u1 equal to 2, u2 equal, equal to hello. So u1 is storing an integer and u2 is storing a string. And if I want to print out u1 and u2, I can simply do u1, u2. And if I run the program, it prints out 2 and hello. Now I want to change u1 equal to u1 times of 2. This will not compile because the operator star is not overloaded for a variant. So instead we need to do this. Get int u1 and then times of 2. So the get function will get an integer out of u1. But you need to be careful not to make a mistake with this type. Say I want to create a string st equal to boost get string u1. This will throw an exception of bad get because what's stored in u1 is really an integer, not a string. But later on, I can change the data in u1 to a different type. u1 equal to good. And now u1 becomes a string. And I do u1 equal to 32. And u1 becomes a int again. So at different point of time, u1 can contain different type of data. A variant can never be empty. So if we create a variant of u3, and then u3 will be constructed with the first type in the type list, which is the integer. So if we print out u3, and we need to comment out this bad get and run the program and u3 contains 0. So far we have been using get function to fetch the data stored in a variant. The problem with get function is we have to know the data type of the data stored in the variant and sometimes we don't know that. For example, we have a function called a double, 
which takes a boost variant int string v. Then how do I know what data the v is storing? We don't know. It depends on the person who is calling this function. So we need a better way to fetch the data stored in a variant. And we do have a better way to do that. We can use visitor. Here I create a class double visitor which is a functor and it is derived from the static visitor class in boost. This functor can take two kinds of parameters integer or string and it will do different things based on the type of the parameter. And then we can use the visitor to operate on the variant u1 equal to 2, it's an integer, boost, apply, visitor, double, visitor, u1. As a result, u1 becomes 4. And if we do u2 equal to hello, and we do the same thing, boost apply visitor, double visitor, u2, and u2 becomes hello, hello. So in a sense, the visitor is like polymorphism on variant. So as you see, using a visitor is both flexible and safe. And now I can do even more powerful things. I create a vector of variant in string vec and we can do vec dot push back good. This is a string and vec dot push back twenty-three integer vec dot push back bad. Another string. And later on I can create a double visitor f and then for auto x vac boost apply visitor f x So this will apply the double visitor on each variant in the vector and do different things based on the data type of the variant. That's all for today. Feel free to check out the other videos I have and see you next time.